The three orders from Jihad has finally arrived. They state as follows. Number one, like this video. Number two, comment your thoughts down below in the comment section. And number three, make sure you subscribe to this channel, The Anime Zillia, today. Jihad's pretty cool. Hello everyone and welcome to the Anime Zillia and thank you for joining me as we talk about the Advent and the Three Orders arcs from the Tower of God webtoon series. A set of great chapters that finishes off the Hidden Floor story and Bam confronts Rachel after learning what transpired between herself and Kuhn. Plus, Wang Nam gets a funny talking sword, so we know things are going to go great for him in the future. But first and foremost, let's talk about those real three orders that were sent down by Jihad. And honestly, those orders were amazing. But before we get into them, I do just want to kind of go off a bit of confusing dialogue that confused me a little bit while I was actually reading these chapters. We have a character that was receiving the orders from Jihad at the altar, and he was speculating as to why he thinks Jihad sends three at a time. But then he contradicts himself shortly after by basically saying we need to complete all three of these orders. Because what he was saying was, or speculating, the reason as to why Jihad gave them three orders at a time always is because he believes Jihad is possibly giving them the choice to... Um, change the direction of the tower and how it goes in the future. But then, with that logic in mind, you would think that they don't have to complete all of these orders, despite the fact that completing all of these orders would please the king greatly. But of course they want to complete them all, so that's why there is such a great panic when they finally find out what these orders entail. These orders are orders to destroy or kill these three specific groups. We've got Fug, everyone who is currently riding the Hell Train. Which, does that include the train driver? Because that guy is going to be in very bad shape and poor him, if so. And finally, the Pulpido family. The one that Gustang is affiliated with, or the head of, I should say. Now obviously these are massive deals. And these orders will take a long time to complete. Killing Fug is basically killing a religion. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. Especially when you consider the fact Fug have slayers, slayer candidates, elders, and even high rankers like Bam's teacher. That we know are powerhouses in of themselves, despite being ancient beasts, as they like to call them. So to Jihad's army, the easiest sounding mission when looking at those orders would be the one to kill all of the members of the Hell Train. But they have to find a reason to justify killing regulars. But unknown to the army, there are two slayers in Kraka and White. There's also two guides in Harian and Evan. There's also Yuri Jihad and Endorsi Jihad, plus the irregular Bam 25th and all of his companions, which, let's be honest, aren't going to be much of a threat to like high rankers and Jihad's army, but they can still be like ants eating away at someone's feet and, yeah, be a nuisance. So the army themselves are already going to be blindsided by the appearance of all of these powerful beings emerging from the Hell Train once they finally try to attack it. Now the Third Order is obviously the one that's going to create a war between families and conflict between the Pulpido family members serving within the ranks of Jihad's army. I see a lot of bloodshed and animosity being thrown towards these people that don't necessarily have a clue as to what's going on or even deserve that kind of treatment. And up to this point, people from the Pulpido family were proud serving members of the Jihad army and pledged their loyalty to their king. But now all of a sudden, because of the actions of their family leader, they're going to be turned upside down, or at least they're going to be in a world of pain coming up. So that's what I can see happening with that confrontation and that order in the future. Maybe not straight away, because we're going to have to follow Bam and his friends first, 
but in the background, as did like a side story, I think that's the way they're going to go for that thing. So coming up in the next few arcs, they're going to be very action-packed, and hopefully we get some good character interactions and some unique matchups as we have new characters appearing left, right and centre, trying to take down our heroes on the Hell train. Will Karaka and White even cooperate and team up with Bam to defend themselves and everybody else, as Haryun hinted at her guide powers returning thanks to the weird situation the train is experiencing. She's already asked Ho Quinn and made a deal with him to give him his clone and his powers back if he agrees to help them, but we don't actually hear his answer at the end. Or will Bam's master arrive to rescue and save the day? However, speaking of him, his involvement was really cool throughout these arcs as he suffered minimal damage after being blasted by an anti-high ranker warm ship blast thing. You know what I mean, it's on the screen. And from a display of endurance and setting up this character to be involved in the story and move him to the correct places, I thought this was brilliantly handled. However, we can't really take the fight between him and Machete Jihad too seriously. Saying that though, Machete Jihad does seem to have an ulterior motive behind her own actions. Could she actually still want to fight Jihad, just like her data counterpart wanted to on the hidden floor? After all, we know that there is still a storyline in where she wants to fight Yuri for the 13 month weapons. And she doesn't seem interested in killing off Fug like the orders pertain her to do. And she doesn't actually view the lives of her troops with any high sort of urgency. To me, it actually seemed more like the fact is she's happy to keep Jihad's enemies alive at the risk of weakening Jihad's own army. Because trust me, a lot of troops got destroyed and obliterated as collateral damage when Machene and um, Jin Sung were actually fighting, sparring to make it look like they were enemies while actually they were talking and conversing. Poor soldiers, they don't deserve that. They might have families. One thing though that I did love that comes from Jin Sung's character was the fact that he noted a certain symbol. Now, the main person, the general or rank, high rank person associated with that symbol is actually someone that Jin Sung would have trouble against if he was to be in a confrontation against him. And we get a small kind of teasing of that person as he was playing the piano. Honestly, if these two do end up coming together, Oh, that's got me intrigued. I want to see that. Because if someone as strong, as feared, as Jin Sung is getting cautious of a certain someone, even if they're high division ranking master, whatever they are, in Jahar's army, then you know he's no one to mess around with. So this new character that is upon horizon, that is coming towards the last station, which is the same direction as Jin Sung is going towards now, we could see some good fights coming along the way. However, switching gears now, let's talk about Wang Nam. Who is the person that Wang Nam has to kill in order to obtain this power to protect everyone? That's what the sword asked for. The sword asked for Wang Nam to kill a particular person, a target if you will, in order for power. Now, I do not believe that the target Wang Nam has been given is Bam. I do not believe that to be true because it would just be too obvious and poor story writing if that were the case. Although saying that, I do have a really cool idea as to why the sword would want Wang Nam to kill Bam. However, I am going to save that for a bit of a theory video coming up later on. At a real guess, and a complete random guess at that, I would have to say Rack. As we know, or have to presume, that this sword would be linked to Jihad. And we learned that Jihad wiped out all of the native ones, but Rack still remains. Maybe there's still a way for Rack to obtain this power that Jihad once feared that would cause him to wipe out a race completely to begin with. Plus, we know that Jihad is anxious about something when he met his data self uh, for the first time. So what that thing was, 
maybe he's anxious that there's still something that's still able to obtain. There is still something that's able to kill him if obtained. And maybe that something is obtainable by Rack. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, just ask me in the comment what I meant and I'll explain better in writing. But hopefully that makes sense. Nevertheless though, it's good seeing Wang Nam get a power boost. Although I would like to have seen him do more on this hidden floor. Still though, with Karaka seeing value within him and taking him away again, it keeps Wang Nam important to the story and I want to see how to implement his character moving forward. Cool. Don't show your face to anyone who is important to me ever again, or I might have to kill you next time. Words spoken by Bam towards Rachel. Honestly, seeing all this misfortune targeted towards Rachel was rather satisfying. As I personally don't mind Rachel's character, I think she's a well-written character in terms of being an antagonist that the audience is meant to hate. She has a lot of heat on her character and the way that SIU has written her character to have that effect on the audience has been spectacular. But seeing her in pain and not kind of keeping the body of Icarus and reverting back to a normal ugly self was just so fun to read while going through these arcs. Looking into her mindset though, things get a bit more interesting as we see her acting like a victim. She believes that she's the victim in all of this situation. She's done nothing wrong. All she did was take revenge. But that revenge was revenge that she created herself. If it wasn't for her pushing Bam off the test floor, Kuhn wouldn't have any reason to suspect her actions being fishy. If she didn't cripple Dan and team up with Apple and Maple, who then killed the Birdman on Kuhn's team, Kuhn wouldn't have even bothered to waste time looking for her if she had left the group. The only bad thing that Kuhn ever did to Rachel was embarrass her in that fish catching game and threatened her that if he ever got a chance again, then he would do much more serious things to her. But those serious things never actually happened or occurred. So Rachel, you really are in the wrong in this situation. You created this mess yourself. However, despite that, the thing that makes you more despicable within this arc is the fact that you still find a way to hook Bam into following you further up the tower, chasing you once again. With the law of information about Bam's mother and who Bam truly is, you've now piqued his interest and he now somewhat still has this kind of lingering feeling that he should chase after you. Although this whole segment between Bam and Rachel has been a massive eye-opener for his character and he's taken a positive step in moving away from his desires to be with Rachel because he now believes there's no way back. So while on the other hand seeing Bam stand up to Rachel and use his power towards her, targeting her with that power without losing control, showcases his development in understanding and harnessing his own powers. But even more so, he now sees what a slimy person Rachel truly is, and is tired of her excuses. This attack on Kuhn, his teammate, was the last straw for Bam. You can do whatever you want to Bam's character. I believe that Bam is someone that basically is like, oh, do whatever you want to me, but as soon as you harm my friends and the people I care about, that's when you cross the line. That's when I stop being nice. And you know what? That was a massive, great display from Bam's character here. He no longer understands Rachel's actions, nor do I personally think he cares to understand at this point. Before hearing about Kuhn's condition, there may have been a small line of hope remaining within Bam's heart that Rachel might change and return to the person she was when she first found him. But now, that hope seems to have faded completely. Nothing remains 
within his heart for Rachel. One thing that I'm super interested to see though moving forward is Bam's reactions to learning of Ark Raptor and Prince's death. After all, the group now knows about this, but chose not to tell Bam because of his own well-being. Had Bam known this information at the time before confronting Rachel, I believe that both Rachel and White would most likely have been killed in that very moment. If that were to have occurred though, if Bam were to have killed Rachel and killed White or just one of the other, then this would change Bam's character completely, possibly putting him on a similar path than Jihad was at this point when Jihad first climbed the tower, creating this kind of evil aura and a mixture of emotions that drives Bam forward, which would have been kind of cool to see, but I'm glad it didn't go down that route. The only thing I did not like about this interaction between Bam and Rachel was Rack. Sorry, but seeing him without clothes in his full body form was just utterly disturbing. And finally, after so long, we get to see Evangel. And honestly, I'm surprised at the design of this character, but nevertheless, I still think the design is pretty cool. The first introduction that this character had was fiery and explosive, as we learn about her having the power of an ancient. Whatever that means, we'll have to find out in future arcs. Nevertheless though, I'm curious to see if any of the other characters that we've been introduced to so far also have powers of an ancient. But the elephant looking design that's on fire and in flames just looks magnificent. So let's see this character, Evangel, unleash her full power somewhere soon. I'll be patiently waiting for that time. I really do like the design of the test floor administrator, but I am curious to find out as to where it transported both Hang Sung Yu and Evang Hel to. Seems like it's gone a really far away because of the dialogue in where the administrator stated it just wants to be, you know, in a slumber. It just wants to sleep in peace and all these people around the test floor are creating too much of a disturbance and fires them. A very comedic scene, but nevertheless though, I really did like this character's introduction. And seeing Hung Sung Yu once again in the flesh and not in data form, I thought was, um, yeah, it's interesting. Because it now means that these two characters are going to be intertwined into the story. So I'm interested and intrigued at the same time to see how they're going to be implemented and what side they're going to be on. Because if Van Kel does not seem to be too um, loyal to Jihad in terms of following orders and carrying out what Jihad wishes. In fact, if Van Kel seems to be doing the opposite than what, he's told to, what she's told to do, sorry. Apart from all those things I've just spoken about in this video though, I thought the new characters introduced were great and the story is setting up to be really, really exciting as we head towards the last station. A place that should be a paradise for regulars, but now it's becoming a war zone. Plus seeing how Eden and Data Jihad work together against Real Jihad was fantastic. Seeing how none of their attacks, even though they are overpowered and broken as irregulars and even as Data, their attacks did not phase King Jihad at all. And from the dialogue, Data Hung Sung Yu um, had a very emotional and profound send off when explaining about how all these people that are actually Data were actually more human than um, they were meant to be. They held human emotions. He felt their heart within their Data selves. And you know what? I really did like that because it did add a bit more emotion, a bit more drama to the whole. Um, hidden floor data world kind of being deleted and vanishing completely. But now with Team Shibisu looking to get involved and helping out their friends who are arriving at the last station unaware of what awaits them, the army are setting up their preparations for the train's arrival and things should be getting very fun and exciting in arcs to come. So hopefully you've enjoyed this review, if you have then hit that like button and of course, if I've missed anything from these two arcs, 
then let me know in the comment section down below and we'll have a conversation and discussion about that. Or if you disagree or agree with some of the points that I've made, then of course express your own opinions because I do want to hear what you have uh, to say. But remember those three orders from the start of the video that I presented. You know, Jihad will be very upset with you if you don't follow through with those three orders. And uh, above all else though, I hope you have an amazing day. Ali Gator, Matane, goodbye.